another episode of the Stephanie Gately Show. Rafael Villa and head coach Stephanie Gately. The Rams coming off a one-in-one week where they lost against Dayton on the road and then beat Duquesne in another road game after a quick turnaround. The Rams right now hold on to the second seed in the Atlantic 10. That's good enough for a first-round bye. They control their own destiny. If they beat St. Joseph's or if Duquesne loses against LaSalle this Saturday, Fordham will lock up that first round bye. But first, let's go through those last two games. And I do want to start off really quick with that Dayton loss, the 79-54 loss against Dayton, the top team in the Atlantic 10, still undefeated. But now looking at it in hindsight to that Duquesne game, can you see some of the positives of taking that kind of loss against Dayton, especially in terms of the emphasis that you placed on defense? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because as a coach, you typically have one just – bad game in conference and we've we've haven't had the really bad game mm-hmm. where we play no defense and don't shoot well unfortunately it came at a big time you know with a chance to still play around for the regular season title and playing at Dayton um but it all happened at the same time you know my biggest concern was how we were going to respond from that just because you know Dayton came in and took it right to us and I was concerned how we folded you know we just we, we didn't show any fight we didn't show any toughness and when I was breaking down the tape, when we were down 10, we played like we were down 25, and, and I just felt like, you know, we weren't the typical Fordham Ram gutsy defensive, you know, team. So, um, of course, I challenged them, you know, and, and this this group likes to be challenged. They like to be held accountable, and uh, we did a lot of soul-searching from starting with me, you know, what can I do better? So we had the kids fill out a sheet of, like, what can we all bring to the table that will really help us down the stretch? And uh, we were able to honestly look at each other to see how we take these steps. And I think, you know, we, again, as I say all the time, if we play defense, we will be in every game. If we shoot well, we'll win it going away. If we don't shoot well, we'll steal it, which is what we did against Duquesne. We shot, I think, 33 32% and stole that game because we played great defense. And obviously it does seem like, you're going to have a game like that at some point in the season. The significance of that game, though, is it happened so late in the season and right before another important game on the road against Duquesne after a quick turnaround. Was there a little bit of unease from from your perspective going into that two-day break going into Duquesne? Yeah, for sure, because you're not sure how you're going to respond, you know, because I just saw a lot of things kind of pop in that game that I hadn't seen, like just people getting frustrated. And it's different to be demanding to each other, but it's another thing to be demeaning. And, you know, and, and that's not who we are. And and I think everybody was just super frustrated that, you know, if you want to be a really good team, I think one thing that hit our kids hard, we gave them a copy of the article from that Dayton game, and one of the players, um, their shooter, Canatelli, said, you know, we heard them kind of arguing within themselves on the the court and that just kind of hurt my heart because that's not who we are and so we let them become make them be something we're not and that's typically what we do to somebody else because you know we could see that with Duquesne you know last night when we played them so for us it was a great learning experience and I think we responded well very well to it. How much of the home court advantage you mentioned a- after that Dayton game, but just how was the significance of that kind of an arena with that kind of crowd, and how did it play into their hands? It was huge. I mean, I mean, we, we've been fortunate to play in some games this year with a good crowd, and, you know, we held our own at St. Louis and struggled in a double overtime game, you know, and then obviously, you know, we've had some other games. George Mason had a great crowd, so we're at Penn State. So we, we've had situations like that, but um, the crowd definitely is a bonus. I mean, that's why we spend so much time on marketing for our group because the crowd, is, is it benefits you. It's mm-hmm. like a six-man. So it definitely came into play, especially for their senior day, and their seniors are significant participants on their team. So um, I, I think they were definitely definitely part of, the, part of their success that day. Now going to Duquesne, taking the win 51-43, a different game in terms of your defense looked like a completely different defensive team, or maybe not different, just the one that we'd seen up until that Dayton game. And the shots were going down at a decent percentage, nothing so special, but enough to push you and stay ahead of Duquesne the entire game. What was the significance, not just of the win, which was significant in terms of A-10 standings in general, but the significance of the win after the quick turnaround? Uh, There's a lot of key points there because, one, like you said, coming after and responding to the Dayton game. But, two, there was a lot of hurdles in that game. You know, Mary went down. You know, so then after Mary goes down, we respond to that. Then G goes down. Then we have to respond to that. Then they come back in, but, you know, G got back, went back out. Then Lauren picked up her third foul. There was just a lot of drama in that <laughs> game that, you know, was like, 
punch, counter punch. And, and we've never, since I've been here at Fordham, won at Duquesne. You know, so for us, it was, you know, playing a team that only had one loss at home and, you know, having to really step up after not playing well at Dayton. So to me, that was a huge step in the right direction. Kavanaugh was a little bit was a little bit cold in that game in general, or maybe just not as willing to put up the ball as we've seen her so often do. Meanwhile, Lauren Holden seems like her conference self has been her best self. This has been a, a time where she's hit from three and hit from the field at a 45 plus percentage in general. So first, focusing on Lauren Holden, who's right now been a hot hand in terms of guards around the perimeter for your side. What have you seen from her? And is there an extra gleaming of confidence that you've seen as she steps onto the court? Yeah, and I kind of got on her last night because she passed up some shots, you know. And, and so I, I, one time she had an open three and she dribbled penetrate and got her shot blocked. I'm like, take the first good shot. I mean, that, that's your shot. You know, don't over penetrate. I mean, they lead the conference in unblocked shots. So, you know, play to your strength. And Lauren has been such, you know, you know, such a stable player for us. I mean, she really, really has been one that we can – is regularly solid both offensively and defensively for us down the stretch. Kavanaugh has been able to put up 20 in games, and you obviously know where her ceiling, at least for this season, has been. That game, she had sub-10 points in a defensive game. Is there Was there an issue there that you saw from her, or was it just a matter of she played to the dictation of the game? Combination of both. I mean, I think she struggled field goal percentage-wise in the last few games, I and mean, part of that's the defense being placed on her. You can look at somebody like a I guess a Trey Young from Oklahoma, you yeah. know, you can do a little comparison mm -hmm. and, and you can't let it get into your head. I mean, you just got to take what the defense gives you. If they double up on you, somebody else is going to be open. Um, and one of the things I challenged Bree on, because Dayton, she was, put it nicely, horrible on defense. And so I challenged her, like, you have the ability to make a difference defensively. So if you're not shooting the ball well, you still are a factor, but you didn't do that. And also going to the offensive boards. Like, kids don't understand. If you attack the offensive boards, you are stalling their fast break because Canatelli kept getting out on us in Dayton. That's because – Bree did not pursue the offensive boards, and so therefore, if you're not pursuing, that kid can leak out. If you're pursuing, that kid has to hold you off the boards. And I tried to explain that to the kids last night. And I, th I mean, we, you I mean we, we looked at the statistics. Duquesne had not won a game when they're out rebounded. So I thought we did an outstanding job being aggressive on the offensive boards, and I think that had a lot to do with the success. That Duquesne game was was tight from the first quarter to the last, even though you had the lead for almost the entire game, they still were able to pull it within one late before eventually taking the eight-point victory for your side. Did you feel in control, though, that entire game? No. I mean, when you're on the road, you just don't know what's going to happen, especially with, you know, G was struggling with her ankle. Mary was struggling with her ankle. We had kids, in, you know, Bree picked up her fourth foul, which is unusual. We haven't had Bree off the court. So there was a lot of things that came into play with your backcourt and foul trouble. You're concerned because you haven't had a kid, you know, you haven't had other kids that have been able to step up other than, you know, uh, Zara and Kendall. Uh, so for us, uh, never felt we were in trouble. It's funny you say that because with 25.6 seconds to go, I, you know, we were on the foul line with a five-point yeah. lead, and Mary, I mean, I can see Bree and Lauren, like, high-five, I'm like, this game is not over. You know, <laughs> settle down, you know, so, and they were like, okay, you know, so I had to remind them that, you know, you got to play this out, that they're, they score in bunches. A lot of their games, they've been down at half, down at the third quarter, and come back and won, so I wasn't at ease until the buzzer went off. And after that kind of game, obviously, they were the second seed in the Atlantic 10. Now you're the second seed in the Atlantic 10, winning the head-to-head -head matchup in Duquesne, the only team that you have that you've lost to in the in conference without having beaten them first is now Dayton. Do you see yourself as the second best team in the Atlantic Ten? I mean, I think there is a lot of parity. I mean, I, I just you know right now I think really anybody can win it. I mean, you look at VCU knocking off St. Louis yesterday, and you look at UMass going and beating a Richmond that's playing well. Um, I really think it's anybody's tournament. I don't think they're – I mean, even though obviously Dayton is undefeated and they're very, very – probably the most talented team in conference, I really think anybody can win this this conference tournament. And so there's not a clear cut two, three, four, five. I mean, I mean, they're – Numbers-wise, obviously, it's set apart by the, the numbers of the wins. But, you know, I just really think it's anybody's tournament. There's, there's no easy game. And as we approach that Atlantic 10 tournament, we still have one more regular season game, and that's going to be against St. Joseph's. We'll bring Coach back later to talk about that matchup. But first, they're going to need somebody to perform as well as she can 
going into the Atlantic 10 tournament. And that's going to be senior Jamaris Davis. We're going to talk to her next. Now let's go on the court with senior forward Jamaris Davis approaching what might be her final game at the Rose Hill Gym when the Rams take on St. Joseph's. And gee, has that sunk in yet that this might be the final game you play at the Rose Hill Gym? I think today is starting to sink in. Like, oh my God, senior day is coming up. This might be the last time I'm on the court. It's a little the bit. The FPV guys are calling. They want to yeah. do a show with you. <laughs> it's a little bittersweet. It's a bittersweet moment. And now A-10 tournament time is coming up. And that's obviously a huge distraction in its own. Obviously, the game against St. Joseph's is is the senior day ceremony, which is just going to be you this season. Is that taking a bit of a backseat to all this? Because there's a lot afterwards that you're still going to have to deal with. Mm. No, it's not actually. I'm I'm really excited about senior day, but I'm trying not to make that as much of an emphasis. Um, you know. So I guess, yeah, it is taking a backseat because my main focus is just, you know, on the St. Joe's game. But I am really excited about it. And in terms of that, are you having – is your family going to come down? Or are you going to have people in the crowd for St. Joe's? Yeah, I have a lot of people coming. I'm still scrambling around trying to get tickets, so we'll figure that <laughs> out. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm hoping that they're able to accommodate Jamaris Davis <laughs> for the tickets that she wants for, for the Rose Hill Gym yeah, for St. So. Joseph's. Um, that game, though – is obviously a pretty big one. Uh, you control your own fate now, and you could have the second overall seed in the Atlantic 10, which would clinch the first round by. Coach has said, though, time and time again, that that's, not the, that's something she's not trying to focus on, and it's just a matter of winning the next game. Or, But for, for yourself, and obviously you had the ankle injury last game, is that first round by something that you personally would like? Yes, I would love to have a first round bye. That means two days off, a lot of rest for my ankle. So I think the team is focused in, um, you know, as a whole. And we know what we have to do in order to get second place and to get that bye. So I think everybody's focused. We're ready for the game. You know, it's just a matter of playing it now. And just a housekeeping uh, question. The ankle's good. You're good to go. You feel like you're good to go now oh, for Saturday. Yeah, I'll definitely be playing Saturday. No questions. And then now back a little bit to that to the senior day ceremony. You're going to have the spotlight all to yourself, only senior that they're going to be celebrating on senior day and obviously a young team. We've talked about it this season. I mean, you you're the you're the senior, you're the one that everyone looks to. How does that go now when now the eye, the eyes have been on you all season from the playing standpoint, but now it's more of a personal thing. Everyone, your fre the freshman class and all the younger girls on the team now look and send you off at the Rose Hill Gym. How does that feel? It's crazy to be in that position now because for three years I've been, you know, one of the underclassmen sending off our seniors. So it's crazy to be in that position, but, you know, it's just been one heck of a ride. And, you know, looking back on everything that I've been through, all the experiences, all the relationships I've been able to build it's just really really heartwarming so like I said before it's bittersweet you know going off hopefully going into my professional career um, as a basketball player it's really exciting but it, it'll be hard to leave you know what has been home for the last four years is it odd to have that stage all to yourself you know, I, I love the spotlight. So, you know, not really. I'm going to be so excited. <laughs> Smiling from ear to ear, all the attention on me. <laughs> and then, obviously, this team has gotten farther than maybe even coach, maybe even you guys thought that it would get to this point. Obviously, you approach the season with the goal of getting to the A-10 tournament, winning the A-10 tournament, and beyond that. Um, but with the young team and... The obviously Dayton, the Duquesnes, the St. Louis is coming into the season with so much hype. It was just the unknown. Mm -hmm. What's the special spark that this team has just seemed to have supplied this entire season? Our chemistry. Like I've been saying, I've been, you know, the three teams that I've had prior to this year, there were times where we had more talent on our teams than we have this year. But the team chemistry that we have this year and the way we work together, you know, there's no real selfishness. Everybody is just so giving and everybody is so, you know, in it on the same page for the better good of the team. So I think it's our chemistry that really has been able to push us to where we are now. I think that Dayton game, aside from obviously the UCLA game early on in the season and then the the double overtime, first of all, the first Dayton game was, was a tough one to swallow in general, but a one-point loss, nothing to be too shy about, and then a double overtime loss against St. Louis. But what about 
this Dayton game, was it? Did you feel it was the first bit of adversity you guys faced this conference season and so late in conference play? Uh, I just think as a team, we didn't have that energy and that intensity. So, yeah, you know, this was the first time where I really felt like, oh, wow, what is going on? Like where we really just couldn't pick it up. We were just so down in the slumps. And then one mistake turned into two, then into three and five. And, you know, it just was a downhill or uphill battle, I should say, um, from the start of the game. And they really jumped on us, especially their senior day. They had a really, really great crowd. And I just think, you know, we kind of were pushed back on our heels and we weren't able to come back from it. So, But, you know, luckily we um, fought back and, you know, showed a different side when we played Duquesne, and I think we're back on the right track. How important was the performance you had against Duquesne, putting that Dayton game a little bit in the rear view? Because obviously Dayton's a team that – many would fancy you'd have to beat in order to get that trophy. But that Duquesne game was just as important and a mm-hmm. quick turnaround again against the top team in the A-10 on the road. How important was that game? We knew, we all knew that it was very important. If we wanted to be in second place in A-10, we absolutely have to win our next two games. So everybody was locked in focus. We knew what was at stake. We knew what we had to do. We knew the type of team we were playing. And we just wanted to really redeem ourselves from, you know, how we did when we played Dayton. Everybody came out focused. I just so happened to be the hot hand to start off the game, and my teammates were uh, did a really good job at facilitating me the ball. And once I, you know, went down, they did a really good job at keeping their composure, keeping the lead, keep fighting. So I was really proud of us as a whole, fighting back from the performance we had at Dayton and then, you know, fighting back from adversity, playing Duquesne with Mary going down first and then me going down. We never really looked shook or scared or uncertain about what was going to happen. We all were on the same page, and we knew that we were going to come out with a win. We just had to handle business, and that's exactly what they did, what we did. Do you guys look at Dayton a little bit differently now from the first time you played them to now this time? It's going to it's gonna have to be some would, um, a lot of people would say that Dayton's going to be that team to beat in the A-10 tournament. So if you want to win the A-10 tournament, you're going to have to get through Dayton a third time mm. this season. Are your eyes adjusted a little bit to the talent on Dayton or or is there just a little more anger in trying to get some revenge for that 25 point loss ah we're not really trying to focus too much on you know Dayton right now we're just trying to take it one game at a time St. Joe's hopefully we get the bye and then we'll worry about everything once we get to the tournament but what I can say is Dayton is a very beatable team when we played with our a game and we were locked in and focused and you know everybody was on their assignments They got us by one, which was unfortunate. We ended up with the last shot. It didn't go in. But Dayton is a very beatable team. And then playing them the second time where, you know, we were off our game and they beat us by, what, 25, you say? Mm -hmm. They beat us by 25. We see, you know, the differences in between the games, how it can go one way or the other. But we know that we have to be locked in and focused. And what we have as a team is very special, and I honestly, truly believe that we can still beat Dayton. We can still win the A-10 tournament. Everybody just has to be locked in and focused. And, you know, that's where everybody's mindset is. Everybody's ready for it. So. And then my last question for you is going to be a senior-related question, obviously with senior day coming up. And it's a tough question to ask because there's still the A-10 tournament coming up, and you could still add to what you've already accomplished in your three plus years and going on four so what when you look back and without seeing how this season's going to play out but when you look back from this moment looking back what's the moment you're most proud of oh wow this is this might be the first time you guys have stumped me on a question <laughs> wow and this is a you question too oh, this is goodness um i don't know there are so many proud moments i'm just I think the thing that I'm, I can't pinpoint one Mm -hmm. specific moment, but I think the thing that I'm most proud of is my growth as a person and as a player. It was tough for me here my first two years. I went through a lot of things here. Um, But being able to just buy into the program, accept how things go here, and be a team player, um, learn to be a leader, I think those were the most special things to me. I can't pinpoint one moment, but I think that my growth um, has to be the fa- my favorite thing about these last four years. Well, Jeet, thank you, and obviously congratulations as you go. Might be your final game at the Rose Hill Gym. Enjoy every moment of it. Thank you so much.
And now let's go look ahead to the St. Joe's game that G and I just talked about. We'll rejoin Coach Stephanie Gately. We're going to look ahead to the game ahead for these Fordham Rams, the regular season finale against the St. Joseph's Hawks. And Coach, this is a program that you once were a coach in. And is there is there some area of emotional attachment to that program? Maybe the first year I was here, not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I think right now it just it's, it's a team that stands between us being the second seat, you know, and it's a really talented team. They played a lot of games without all their players, and, and they're well coached, and they've got some very good upperclassmen, and, and uh, it's a very proud program. So I anticipate them coming in, you know, really giving us a really, really, really good game. And I've asked you this before, but now with the control over your destiny now, a win against St. Joseph's means you'll have that first round bye. We've asked you whether you want, whether that first round bye is something that you covet. After Mary Golding went down, Jamaris Davis went down in that Duquesne game, and they're going to be battling and hopefully be ready to go for Saturday, but they're still, I'm anticipating, not going to be at 100%. Is that something that you've changed your mind on? Is that something that you, you want now? Yeah, I, I think that definitely comes into play. You know, with us not having a true day off or, you know, because of the way the game's been laid out and because of those injuries, it, it definitely would benefit us, I think. Um, but, you know, we just got to take care of business. If we don't, then, you know, we've just got to take lay in our own bed and take care of business in, in, in the next way. So um, the number one thing is, you know, get ready for Saturday, give it our best effort, leave it out there, and then, you know, take what happens from that point. St. Joseph's is 9-6 um, and six in the Atlantic 10 Conference, so they're about midway, middling in the A-10 Conference standings-wise. Is this a team, though, that, that you see as a better or how much better than their record? They're dangerous because some of their losses came with key players out. And so, you know, if you if they were at full strength, I, I think that the record would be higher. I think they were picked third in preseason. So it's a team that had, you know, a, a lot of people back. I mean, they had four starters, I believe, back in the sixth man of the year or sixth woman of the year. Um, so they, they got a really, really solid group of kids. And, um, yeah, do I think the record would be a little different if the injuries weren't in place? You know, for sure. I mean, that definitely comes into place. I mean, we, you look at us, you know, when we lost G at St. Louis, I think that came into play. So, obviously, when you're missing key players, it, it, it affects you. Um, so, but again, at this point, I'm, I'm sure the game for them is going to mean somewhere for something in the standings as well. So it's definitely playing for something, and I definitely feel all our kids will be ready. And one of theirs, one of their standouts is Chelsea Woods. And where do you where do you put her in terms of either a comparison to a player that you've seen already this season, or is she just a different kind of player in general? She's different. She's just a different matchup because mm -hmm. she's so physical. You know, like she just is like a, just really tough attacking the basket. Um, you got to get a body on her. You know, she's a she's a matchup nightmare in some cases. You know, so you know for us, be, you know when they go to their big lineup, you know they're they've got some great size, and so we got to be able to counter that in a different way. But uh, they're a well balanced team. They're a well coached team, and you know, like I told the kids as we hit the stretch of Dayton, Duquesne, and St. Joe's, hey, we're playing three of the top te teams in the conference. That's what we're going to see come tournament time. So we got to be ready to face that and come tournament time you fall in it's because of how uh, a performance like St. Joseph's or St. Louis how they've done this conference season where they're clearly talented and maybe a little more talented than their record shows they end up with the side of, on the side of the bracket that you're going to probably fall into come a 10 tournament time have you seen that and is it is it a little bit is it a little bit scary I to be honest, Ralph, I haven't even looked at it. You know, right now my focus is just on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So once Saturday takes care and, and, and things kind of fall into place, then we'll be able to take the next step because when you get to this time, everybody's scary. You know, mm -hmm. like there's no easy game. The year we won it, we had to go through three teams we lost to during that year. So there's no easy path. So, I mean, if you want to win this all, you got to be ready to take on all challengers. And then again, St. Joseph's, it's going to be your senior day. Might be the last time Jamaris Davis gets to play at the Rose Hill Gym. First of all, take me through your relationship with Jamaris now coming into, I mean, the final stretch of her career here at Fordham. It's been a lot of growth. I mean, the first couple, two years, it was, I'm not going to lie, it was a challenge. I mean, she challenged us in a lot of ways, and she'd be the first to admit it. I'm not telling you anything she hasn't said herself. 
Um, and then there's been a lot of growth. I mean, she has so much potential as, as not only a basketball player, but as a person. Um, so, you know, my goal every day is to try to hold her to those, those standards, which I feel like her mom would want to hold her to. So, um, you know, she, hopefully when she graduates, well, when she graduates, not hopefully she will. She's, she's done very well academically in, in, in the Gabelli School of Business. But when she graduates this spring, I, I just think she's going to have a lot of doors of opportunity open to her. And then we so seldom get to do that and just isolate one senior from the senior class. But since she's the only one, this time she gets her own spotlight. How fitting is that? How suiting is that that it's Jamaris, just Jamaris Davis? She's going to go down as one of the better Rams to ever play on this court. Yeah, I mean, I give her a lot of credit because when, when, when she first came in, she had never learned a post move, you know. I, her coaches say she may struggle with a system, you know, and I didn't feel she did. She picks up things quickly. She's intelligent. Um, but she, you know, she, it's funny. When we did her evaluation at the end of her sophomore year, we do a postseason evaluation with the coaches, and I said, you know, one of the areas is defense. Well, if you decided to play 30 seconds of defense and not just 20 seconds of defense, you could be on the all-defensive team. And then the summary was if you decided to go hard and put extra time in your game, you could be an all-conference player. And then we had a really heart-to-heart -heart because there was times whether I wasn't going to bring G back or she wasn't going to come back at the end of that sophomore year just because we were hitting heads. So finally, she, she decided to be all in. And she came and smiled after the first month of her junior year saying, God, I wish I'd known this earlier. I wish I wasn't such a butthead earlier. Um, and at the end of her junior year, we looked at her evaluation, all defensive team all-conference team because she committed herself to just buying in and once you buy in you know it, it just makes it so much easier you know and 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 she just as soon as she decided to buy in and give everything she had then she just continued to blossom as a player but and a person both on and off the court well coach that'll do it for us for this episode of the stephanie gately show and thank you and obviously thank you to our guest as well and jamaris davis playing her final home game at the rose hill gym maybe this Saturday against St. Joseph's. Davis on the break all the way. To say the word Pandora. That's a great first name, but she is now gone. Marie Cavanaugh is a name we'll be saying on this year, first season with the Rams.